present and this is the past and this is the future. A hard working students and the dedicated staff. Hi, welcome to all of you. So, once again, hearty welcome to every person in this hall. Have a nice time and let's have a good lecture now. Thank you very much. Dr. Manojit, the PG coordinator of the Department of Economics, will felicitate Dr. Aparajika Bakshi. Thank you, Professor. Mr. S. N. Kaushik, the General Manager of Union Bank Bangalore, will now felicitate Professor M. S. Nathan. Principal of St. Joseph's College, 
Uh, we have Mr. Clement D'Souza, the HOD of economics. And most important, I think, I welcome the young students here, scholars from different academic institutes in Bangalore. Uh, I believe our turnout has uh, far exceeded the numbers we ex ex expected. There are chairs at the back, so please fill them up and uh, you can seat yourselves. Uh, not only academics, but I think very important I should mention, uh, of course we have uh, some very senior academics uh, from the University of Agricultural Sciences and other universities, but we also have friends from the Kisan Sabha and other peasant organizations. So I welcome all of you here today uh, to this first uh, annual lecture. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Sandeep and Bakshi, Director at the Foundation for Everything right. Study in Bangalore, will give us an introduction to FBS. Good afternoon, all. Uh, before we begin the substance of the lecture for the day, let me briefly talk about the Foundation for Agrarian Studies. The Foundation for Agrarian Studies, or FAS, uh, is a charitable trust based in India, established in 2003. Uh, we were operational from uh, Calcutta, now Kolkata, and we have been shifted to Bangalore in 2013. The major objectives of the of FAS are to facilitate and sponsor multidisciplinary theoretical and empirical inquiry in the field of agrarian studies in India and elsewhere in less developed countries. Uh, we are we operate as a network of scholars and collaborators, you know, from who are located in different parts of the country, different universities, and are support we are supported by progressive corporate organizations and donor agencies that are interested in promoting research to eradicate hunger, poverty, and malnutrition, promote gender equality, and research on measures to reduce social and economic inequalities. Some of the main activities of the of FAS are, first, uh, we are doing this research project called Project on Agrarian Relations in India. Uh, it's, since 2005, it has been a major activity of FAS an India-wide program of village studies. The project involves description, analysis, and creation of a detailed database on village India in diverse agroecological and socio-economic regions of the country based on regular village surveys. Till date, we have already surveyed 25 villages in 11 states of the country. Apart from this project, we also do projects on special themes a wide range of agriculture and rural development issues in India. A recent study of the small farm economy has now been published as a book titled How Do Small Farmers Fare? And Evidence from Village Studies in India. We are, we are currently working on a research project which looks at women's work in rural economies in India and also in other parts of the uh, world. We are planning to have a world conference based on this project sometime at the, by the end of this year. The foundation also periodically publishes the results of village surveys in its socio-economic survey book series. Under this book series, we have already published three books, one on Rajasthan, one on Karnataka, and, and uh, another on uh, Andhra. We are, at the moment, we are working on three other books, a book on Tripura, book on West Bengal, and one on Bihar. Uh, we also publish the review of agrarian studies it's a peer-reviewed journal of the foundation. Articles are published online on a continuous basis, and the online content is then aggregated, and the print edition comes out twice a year. We also uh, organize regular seminars, conferences, and workshops, which are to disseminate the results of our research to the wider academic community, peasant and agricultural workers associations, and as well as women's associations. We have been doing since last one year, or, or we plan to do, we have done a workshop for young scholars who are working in the field of agrarian studies and we wish to continue it uh, in future. And this is our first public annual public lecture, which we 
again hope to continue in the years to come. Our website is www.fas.org.in. More details about the about FAS can be found on the website. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bakshi, for giving us an overview of the activities of FAS. Mr. S. Ramachandran Pillay would be chairing the session today. He is currently the Vice President of the All Indian Kisan Sabha, which is a mass organization of the peasants, which works for farmers' rights and anti feudal movement in India. Sir has had a long association with the peasant movement in India. He was formerly the president of the Kisan Sabha. I now call upon Sir to deliver his address. Good afternoon, friends. Dr. Emma Swaminathan, D.K. Ramachandran, Mathura Swaminathan, Sandeep Rinpoche, T.J. Raman, Father Victor Lobo, Clement D. Sinsa, Abhiraj Dabetsi, and friends. I am indeed honored to have this opportunity to make an intervention on the occasion of the public lecture by Dr. Emma Sabinath. The people of India have grateful to the contributions of Dr. Emma Sabinath in introducing scientific advancements in Indian agriculture, enabling it to increase production and productivity, and save the country and its people an impending food crisis. I'm an activist of the our India Kisan Sabha, the oldest and the largest present organization in this country. Our India Kisan Sabha, since its inception in 1936 onwards, consistently argues to use the advancements of science and technology to increase agricultural production and productivity. The manifesto of the Anandya Kisan Sabha, adopted in the year 1936, states, I quote, to develop garden and intensive cultivation, to supply cheap and tested seeds and use of fertilizer, to popularize the latest methods of cultivation. We knew that the abolition of landlordism and distribution of land among the peasantry alone will not solve the problems of peasantry and agriculture. The use of science and technology is essential to increase productivity and production and solve the problems of peasantry. Consistent with this understanding, the Alternative Agricultural Policy document adopted in 2003 states the following. Agricultural research should be promoted by the state and adequate financial provision should be made for this. Stress should be given to develop safe, low cost, labor intensive, area specific technologies and link up research with the research efforts in the problems faced by person and agricultural laboratories. Research should be conducted on a substantial scale at different regional centers for developing better seeds, testing the quality of the soil, suggesting measures for soil conservation and reclamation, examining the diseases affecting the different crops, providing quality and safety of agricultural implements, avoiding wastage in agriculture, especially damage to crop resulting from pests, insects, rodents, and also to protect agricultural fields from chemical poison. There should be proper testing of genetically modified seeds before permitting propagation. Unquote. This demand was adopted when the government had reduced public investments in science and technology following the implementation of the neoliberal economic policies. When many other present organizations opposed
exposed to use of transgenic varieties in agriculture. The Alindia Nisan Sabha took up a firm position in favor of transgenic varieties and to make use of advance in science and technology. <laughs>